Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Without much further ado, I'd like to invite Dr. Zakir to continue the lecture. Dr. Zakir. Alhamdulillah. Wa salatu wa salam. Wa la rasulillah. Wa ala ahli wa sahabi ajma'in. Amma abad. Auz billahi minash shaytanir rajim. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Udu ila sabili rabbika bil hikmah. Wa al ma'zit al hasna. Wa jadilun billati ahasan. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. رب شو حلی صدری وسلی امری وحل العبد تملی ثانی یفقہ کاولی رسپیکٹڈ مسٹر عارف سلطان مائی رسپیکٹڈ ایلڈرز اینڈ مائی ڈیبرز اینڈ سسٹرز آئی ویلکم آل آف یو دی اسلامی گریٹنگز السلام علیکم و رحمۃ اللہ وبرکاتہ می پیس بلیسنگ اینڈ مرسی اف اللہ سبحانہ و تعالی بی ان آل آف یو دی ٹاپک of this evening's talk is Islam and its misconceptions. Islam comes from the root word salam which means peace. It also means submitting your will to Almighty God, to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So in short, Islam means peace acquired by submitting your will to Almighty God. Islam is a universal religion. And it's the duty of every Muslim to spread this religion of truth to everyone. But unfortunately, many of us Muslims, in fact, most of us, we shy away from our duty of spreading the truth of Islam. And I started my talk by quoting a verse from the glorious Quran, from Surah Nahal, chapter number 16, verse number 125, he says, وَالْمَعْزِتَ الْحَسْنَةِ وَجَادِلُمْ بِاللَّةِ أَحْسَنِ That is, invite all to the way of thy Lord with wisdom and beautiful preaching and argue with them and reason with them in the ways that are best and most gracious. There are various techniques and methods of doing da'wah, inviting the people toward Islam and conveying the message of Islam to the non-Muslim. Some of them may be less effective while the others may be more effective. One common methodology used by many Muslims is that they present several good points of Islam to the non-Muslim, which is, alhamdulillah, a good method. But normally, even if you present a thousand good points about Islam to the non-Muslim, even if he agrees with those good points, yet he will have at the back of the mind. Ah, you are the same Muslim who marries more than one woman. Ah, you are the Muslim who subjugates women by keeping them in the will. Ah, you are a fundamentalist. You are a terrorist. You know, oh, you are the people who don't have pork, who don't have alcohol. These questions will keep on ticking at the back of his mind. And these misconceptions will prevent him to accept Islam as a whole. So what I personally believe and prefer that whenever I convey the message of Islam to a non-Muslim, whenever I have the opportunity, when non-Muslim comes to me or when I go to him on an individual level, the first thing that I ask is that instead of presenting a thousand good points about Islam, I ask him that what do you feel is wrong with Islam? With your limited knowledge, with whatever knowledge you have got, whether you have heard it on the television or wherever, whatever limited knowledge you have got, whether from the right source or from the wrong source, what do you feel is wrong with Islam? And many will be shy, will not be comfortable in asking questions, you know, because a Muslim may be hurt. So I am making very comfortable. Brother, you can ask any question. You can criticize Islam. You can take whatever objections you want. Only we want to know the reason. Why do you feel that there is something wrong in Islam? What do you feel is wrong with Islam? And after making him comfortable that, see, Alhamdulillah, though I am a young person, you know, I can take it. You know, young people have hot blood, you know, but Alhamdulillah, I can take it. I am young, but I can take it. You can criticize Islam, you can speak whatever you want about Islam, but please let me know what do you feel is wrong with Islam. And after he poses the question, if I remove these misconceptions from his mind, his mind is empty. And once his mind is empty, all the negative points have been removed, even if I say 50 good points about Islam, he'll accept it with open heart. 
So I personally prefer, instead of picking a thousand good points about Islam, first remove the negative feeling which he has about Islam from his mind and then present even a few good points about Islam, it will make miracles. And Alhamdulillah, in my past few years of experience that I have in the Dawah field, say approximately past eight years, I have analyzed that there are a set of about 20 most common questions which the non-Muslim poses about Islam. And whenever any non-Muslim asks you four or five questions about Islam, invariably these four or five questions will be part of this set of 20 common questions. You ask a non-Muslim, what do you feel is wrong with Islam? And he'll pose you three, four questions or four or five questions. Invariably, all these questions will be part of this set of 20 common questions. But naturally, it's based on the Quran and the Sahih Hadith. But many a time, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala himself does not specify the reason why he has prohibited certain things. Certain aspects he has mentioned in the Quran and the Sahih Hadith, certain aspects he has not mentioned. So, Alhamdulillah, whatever is there in the Quran and Sahih Hadith, I have given the quotation. And the remaining